All right, I am here with Cooper Andrews, the star of the new miniseries event on HBO Max called Aquaman, King of Atlantis. You also know him from like a bunch of other nerd stuff, but we're going to talk about Aquaman mostly today. Please welcome my man, Cooper Andrews. What's going on, Cooper? <laughs> Not much. I like that. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, I'm a big fan. I've loved you ever since I saw you on Walking Dead and and to see you like in shazam and now in, like you're fully entrenched in the dc universe now right it's where i want to be i love dc i love <laughs> dc <laughs> i am so excited about aquaman like, well that's that's I'm why we're so here stoked about it. that's yes. why we're here i mean so just be but before we dive down into the depths yeah. of atlantis you know being a part of two like the, of the biggest nerd franchises in the world, right? Because you know, like we're just take DC in general, right? Like I said, you're you're also in Shazam, and now you're Aquaman. But The Walking Dead, right? The, these two huge iconic nerd franchises. Were you a nerd growing up? Like, what what was it? What is it like for you to kind of be, you know, kind of a king of San Diego Comic Con right now, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a I'm a court jester at best. But the, <laughs> no, you are royalty now. You, you can't deny it. You are literally royalty now. Maybe the instruction card. Um, <laughs> uh, what, but what was that question? <laughs> no, just what is it like? To, I mean, one, were you a nerd growing up? And then if, oh, if yeah, so, uh, like, what's it like now to kind of like have these mega franchises under your belt? I mean, to me, see, I always got, I mean, wait, I can get into the semantics of the terminology. To me, nerds were always the ones, nerds can be people that were in to the geeky stuff, but also really smart. Me, I just did the, I'm not the really smart part. I just <laughs> liked all the liked all the franchises. I was a DC fan from the beginning. Superman uh, was, uh, I mean, I was raised on George Reeves, Chris Reeves, yep. um, and uh, the old cartoons where like uh, they dealt with things it was like physics where someone would fall from a building and he would alley-oop the guy back up so that, so that if you just catch a body, it doesn't splat. Um, uh, all the action figures. I remember I was, uh, uh, I mean, I had all, all the toys. I collected uh, I collected DC Comics, mostly Superman from, oh, geez, 91 uh, till 2000, uh, 2002 or so. Nice. Was, uh, so like that's like Death of Superman and, and all that yeah. stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And like rain, and then like him turning blue, blue and red, the electrical, and then... electric Superman. <laughs> yeah, what was ever happening? What was happening? <laughs> like, yeah, it's weird that that's uh, never gotten adapted into a movie or animated. <laughs> red yeah, blue yeah. Superman. I yeah, those are some. Those are some uh, lean times in the Superman. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but no, always, always been a fan. Uh, just of the to me the difference between and 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 i love i love marvel sure. as well but the um it's never a marvel or dc guy well DC yeah guy, we can't but, we love all of it right like does, yeah, do we have to choose you know yeah it's like i ain't choosing that it's like i'm the guy that gets uh pizza and chinese food so there you I go don't, yeah i don't <laughs> exactly uh, choose um <laughs> uh, uh but yeah the dc what i loved about dc and what i love about all their heroes is that their heroes um all had to make a choice like they all had to make the choice to become the hero like that right. you know it, it, like forced on them a little bit but i always felt like when it came to the marvel uh for a lot of marvel characters it's sort of they were they were born this way and they sort of lived their life um they try to live their life regardless and and then uh with the with the dc you know there's always they're there to make a difference you have batman doesn't want to see anyone uh like he doesn't want to have his childhood on anyone else superman right. who has all these powers can do whatever he wants but you know the the one thing is to uh you know protect uh wonder woman who sees you know uh injustice and in, you know the world of man and you know has to do it and then you have aquaman who's uh you know a guy who he had his life you know he was doing his he was doing his things he was he was running his life and now he has to be able to take his experience uh of just being just being a man to you know you know, protecting an entire ocean. Mm -hmm. um, we say, you know, it's, you know, it's a lot, you know, it's like kingdom, you know, ruling is really more about just protecting and like how to, you know, how to make everyone better. That's the, so no one gave themselves an, an easy task of becoming, you know, but they all chose to become that hero. Right, 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 right. No, I mean, that, that's absolutely right. I mean, that's kind of what I've always been drawn to the DC universe more so as well, is that like, you know, and, and I think there's a, 
a misperception about DC because people always say it's like these gods that you're that are unrelatable and it's like you, that's just surface right you're not really reading oh, these yeah. stories in because like someone like a Superman like you mentioned I what I love about you know people are always like well he's he's too powerful he's OP you can't relate to mm -hmm. Superman but he's actually the most human of all the superheroes right like because what's his weakness it's not kryptonite it's his love for right. humanity you know what i'm saying yeah it's his and i exactly the uh, uh uh what was it the uh superman returns that that line i love that line so much where he's like he's like flo uh, floating lois up and he's like what do you hear and she's like nothing he's like well i hear everyone you know i hear everything and and i hear all these people crying out for a savior and i'm like superman is like in his mind, I mean, I, you know, however you want to take it, but it's almost like he's almost like the biggest failure um, because because he, he can't can say only that. save he can only save so much and he can't. But he knows it's all happening. Right. Um, so that's the uh, that's what I love about it. You know, but like you said, there's the yeah, he's super powerful, but he's not trying to like just beat up people or like, you know, like stop bank robberies. He wants, you know, there's a person in trouble, no matter the, the cause he wants to, to help them. And I think I think that's sort of shared. uh that's that's definitely shared with Aquaman um, in our uh, in our story, and just that uh, there's not a I don't know there's not a problem too small. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. Let let so let's dive in. Let's dive. In. I'm going to use a bunch of silly ocean puns probably for the rest of this episode. <laughs> but, like, but let's dive in, right? Because like what I love about kind of this new generation of Aquaman, because you know we're two old head DC fans, right? And for the longest time. Aquaman was this blonde haired, blue eyed, you know, prototypical superhero. Along comes James Wan. He says, you know what? Let's let's cast Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Let's put a Hawaiian oh, yeah. dude, an Islander as as the ocean's protector, which like, why did no one think of this for 50 years? Right. Like this makes total right. sense. And what I love about your casting, to be completely transparent, is that like it almost canonizes Aquaman as Polynesian you know what i'm yeah. saying uh yeah. talk about the other you know this and this is not a spinoff of the of the movie uh franchise whatsoever but it is you know executive produced by james did you like what one what was your impression of, of jason's kind of take on aquaman and how how has your life experience kind of like informed your take which is wildly different from Jason's, right? Let's just yeah. be clear. But, you know, I, 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 I just, like, again, maybe this is surface, but I, I just love the idea that Aquaman is now 100% Pacific Islander. I love that. You know, I, I agree. I love that so much because, I mean, the people that see, and you're on an island, you see all sides of that ocean, you know, there's, it's, you're surrounded by it and just, um there's i don't know it, it, i mean maybe it's i don't know if it's a me thing but i feel like it's a lot of us uh polynesian uh uh there's that connection there's that strong connection to the water to the ocean where it just it really I, i've i've never feel uh, you know i've never felt threatened by by an ocean it just felt like something that like one day i may have to just go in there and you know <laughs> uh you know it might you know but it's it's just always been this this place of peace um I think for many of us and so but Jason's uh first off I worked with him on uh this uh, uh on this thing called Red Road um this uh uh this show a few years ago uh and I remember like you know I know you know I've, I've you know I've heard about you know I mean I, I don't know anything about him and then I'm like looking at this guy he's taller than me really <laughs> fit this just this just this good looking guy and i'm like oh man it's like like i i hope mm, i and then the worst thing ever happened all right he's super cool that's the worst <laughs> thing like right he's so cool and he's so friendly and it's i'm always like i'm like i can't even hate this guy I yeah can't even hate him. Like, <laughs> that's what you hate about like, you hate that you can't hate him right <laughs> i can't he's just he's just such a good person uh, uh he was so fun on set um and just the interpretation of aquaman i mean like Aquaman's a badass and and he that that's just what he is and it's and and but I like that it's you know the ocean kind of takes care of itself I mean like a lot of the mentality is like the ocean takes care of itself and then you realize right. it it can't it does need it, it does need a protector and there's a thing about being usually for me uh <laughs> except with Jason uh 
the biggest guy in the room, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like this, I don't know, it's it's like we're kids, there's almost like this like natural, like protect, you're bigger, you're, you believe you have to protect. I mean, whether, you know, whether that is what we're supposed to do or not, but you, you, you feel that. Um, And, you know, he, he just plays this, you know, you know, he's going to be the hero, but you also know that he's making like you can feel the choice that he has to make you know and and what i felt in aquaman was that like he knows what he has to do he's gonna be reluctant to it but not in a just not in this hokey way that i normally see it's like i don't want to do it it was thrust upon me it was more like i mean i don't want to do it but i mean (laughs) i'm gonna do it It like it's gonna be done let's do it right you know yeah yeah, we're gonna do this i'm gonna do this you know but it's like so it's not so much the reluctant hero it's more like oh man okay fine you know it's 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 like a uh it's like it has to be done i'll do it you know i'm not thrilled but i just i just love <laughs> that um to me because that to me that's what a hero to me a hero that has to make that kind of choice right um where it's because he could turn his back he didn't like he could turn his back on things and just the but i mean i don't know he's just he, he played it he played it awesomely i i enjoyed it i tried to give a little every now and again i try to do a little throw uh just uh, uh like my little bit of like a comic comical version of of how like all oh, right like yeah yeah time, like, just <laughs> that's to, what i mean like there's a there's of, a taste a little taste but it's not yeah, just, just it's the de- little it, moments of it <laughs> it's definitely your own take on the character and i think what would you both share is this like relatability right like there is like aquaman comes off as a human being even though he's like half yes. most powerful atlantean but you know there's this, there's this, again, we were talking about misperceptions of DC heroes, and there's always been this misperception that like Aquaman is kind of like a punchline. And while yours is a very comedic take, it never kind of like falls into that trap of like Aquaman is not, you know, he's, he's just a joke, right? Like it's, it's, it's right. still like, he's still the king of Atlantis. He's still the, and you know, I was saying earlier that um, I feel like the whole Aquaman is a joke is only because of Entourage. I think before Entourage, there was nothing inherently like jokey about Aquaman other than the fact that like the super friends, everyone was freaking silly on super friends. You know what I mean? Like right, yeah. you, if you, if you pull a gif from of Batman during super friends, yeah, he's going to look silly as shit. So it's like, no, like Aquaman inherently isn't necessarily like a silly character. I mean, Marvel's version is Namor and no one ever thinks of Namor as silly, right? Like it's, they've always yeah. like being an Atlantean is badass, Right. So I love that you guys kind of like, while being comedic, never like, you know, take shots on on the character, and that's that's no, really gr- yeah. great. Uh, you know, a balance that you yeah. have to strike. Yeah, no, it, it's uh, I really I really love how this character is. Um, he still has that reluctance, but not it, like he knows he's going to do it. But just it's like a like it, it, it's just this confusion of uh, of a guy like saying, "Is this this is what we have to do?" What it feels like this is really simple. Am I missing something? Like, is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and just him trying to get the, uh, uh, he's just trying so hard to, to, you know, get the approval of his people to just, you know, let them know that he belongs there. Right. Right. Um, and it's just, uh, uh, it, it's fun. Like the, the he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to be me. I'm going to do me. And, and hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll see that and they'll appreciate <laughs> what I'm, what I'm trying to do, but we got to do it anyway. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, so, I mean, I had fun. <laughs> this is this is the most fun I've had performing um, was just being, you know, being in that uh, in that room and just and just going off and, and trying to do all these different versions of what, uh, you know, of what we thought Aquaman might be. Yeah, into, yeah. And just his his flusteredness, his little childish moments. Um, and then, you know, it's it's I don't know, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Was, <laughs> was this your first like real like voice over gig how how did you approach because you know you mentioned being in the room and like how did you approach acting you know in front of a microphone in a booth versus like what you do on set on shazam or walking dead like how did how did your approach change or did it change it um it didn't there's a few things that change uh i mean voice acting is a is a whole other thing um i get away with a lot of i have a very uh uh not monotone but a very uh underplayed when, when i'm when i'm acting uh it, it, it's i sort of mumble my words out 
Um, <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, Jerry and Vasquez are, like, similar. In that I feel like you're laid back. Yes. You're, like, you're chill. Yeah. But Aquaman's yes. not chill, you know? <laughs> no, Aquaman is not chill. He's like, what is this? <laughs> Explain this to me. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so confused by things. Um, but, yeah, I take it the... Uh, I always take I, I take the acting this, the same way each time I, I I think about where this you know I read I read it over and over uh, I'll read the script uh, a bunch and I'm just trying to I'm just it, it's I try to have these conversations with these characters I play I'm, I'm it's like well how you feel how do you feel about this it's like well I mean I'm I'm happy I'm here I'm a little nervous but it's, okay well why are you why are you nervous like, I don't know I don't I don't want to mess up but it's like okay but why why do you think you're gonna mess up you know you've done so great before it's like yeah I mean I know but like that I mean that could have been luck I feel like it's my instinct and so I just have these but I'll just have these conversations it'll just be me talking to myself for I mean well in Belushi my dog uh he'll hear it but I'll, I'll have these conversations with myself for hours at a time where I'm just not I mean <laughs> I don't know like just asking why are you having such a hard time Aquaman it's like and I just try and uh, I just try and absorb it as, as you know, with any, but with any character, I, I, I do that. I just have these conversations. And um, it was something I heard from a, a, a buddy of mine, uh, Lenny, Lenny James. He was, uh, he's on the, he was on Walking Dead. Yeah, he yeah. The Walking Dead now. And um, he was talking, he wasn't talking about acting. He was just, uh, he was telling me a story and he was, he, it was about his daughter asking him something and he goes, before we can talk about that, yeah, before we have a conversation about that, we need to have a conversation about what daddy does for a living. And I was like, a conversation about before we even answer that, let's have a conversation about what got you here. And before we got you there, let's have a conversation of what got you there. And you and and it just helped me kind of feel like I'm not um with all the characters, it helps me feel like I'm not uh playing a caricature of somebody or like I'm pretending to be a, a thing. I just, uh, so Aquaman, I mean, I would, I would wake up, uh, I would, it's like a 30 plus minute drive to get to the uh, recording uh, studio. And I would just start like singing in the car and like just <laughs> doing all these like vocal warm ups, And I would just like, you know, and I would just be so excited and pumped when every time I, uh, I showed up there. That's awesome. But yeah. Yeah. But going into those characters, that's the, it's just having those conversations. I just, every, every role, it's, I just have a conversation. I just have conversations. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm so thrilled that you get to be Aquaman and, and just to hear that you, you're a big DC fanboy. This must be like a dream come true. Cause it's one thing to play like yes. the stepdad in Shazam and now yes. to be like the actual superhero. That's gotta be so yes. cool. No, I, I mean, it is. I mean, you know, I mean, oh geez, like Batman animated series, you know, when you just first hear like, uh uh kevin conroy's voice i'm like who who is that i think he i think he inspired a lot of us you know yeah and, yeah 100 sure he has um and and just just how and it, did, and it wasn't it's not lost on me i'm like what these cartoons are what like those cartoons are what made me want to do you know acting it's like and i was like oh this is fun because it, it's not so much i want to act per se it's i just want to help tell this story right and I, I want people to feel my excitement uh uh through all these all these things i do um i just love sharing i don't know to, to me acting is just sharing is just sharing like uh uh well, just sharing your feelings right but that's yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah but i just want i always love just sh like it oh i'm always having fun when i'm on set whenever i'm performing and and just being able to push that feeling out and uh maybe hope hopefully you know get some you know people in 30 years will be like hey i listened to that guy yeah well, and and, and yeah, aquaman made me want to be an actor right like anyway i am so thrilled as i said for aquaman and just you know getting a chance to chat with you uh this has been real fun i hope to get another chance in the future how can people find you on the internet and and when can they find aquaman king of atlantis uh i am smug orange uh, i was named after a pet fruit that i kept in my freezer uh with my buddies and we kept them in there for four years uh whoa SMG. that's a whole other story for another podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah all, uh so uh, smug orange uh on on instagram and twitter um and october 14th october 14th guys 
Aquaman King of Atlantis begins. And it's HBO be Max. Awesome. HBO Max. HBO Max. Well, Cooper, thanks so much. This is, like I said, has been fantastic. And I am so thrilled for the rest of the world to check out King of Atlantis because it's going to be dope. Oh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm excited for everyone to get into this. This is this is fun. Like watch with your kids, but as adults, you're going to enjoy it it's so much. <laughs> that's the so best cartoons, right? Like that's the classic WB cartoon, right? Like yeah, kids can get it, yeah. but adults really get it. <laughs> yes, yes. And and there's plenty. I, I, it's it's going to be a lot of, lot of fun. That's awesome. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play, so check this.